and welcome to Asia Business Report. I'm Sharon Jeet Lail. Now, Britain's Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson is in Japan today. He's there for talks that are likely to be dominated by concerns about Britain's departure from the European Union. Now, there was no sign of those worries when Mr. Johnson visited this uh, robotic center in Tokyo. He's been uh, talking up uh, the strong economic ties between the two countries, noting that uh, Japanese companies have invested more than 50 billion in Britain. Uh, Japan's political and business leaders are reported to be increasingly concerned about the state of the Brexit negotiations. And although Mr. Johnson is not directly involved in those negotiations, it'll be important for him to reassure Japan's leaders. And Marcel Tellian from Capital Economics told me what the Japanese firms will be expecting from these talks. And that was Marcel Tellian there speaking to me earlier. And the European Union's chief Brexit negotiator has called on Britain to clarify its position on uh, topics including citizens' rights and a financial settlement. It came at the end of the second round of negotiations in Brussels on Britain's departure from the EU. And now, oil giant ExxonMobil has been fined $2 million by U.S. authorities for violating sanctions against Russia while Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was its chief executive. Uh, Exxon dealt with the uh, president of the uh, Russian oil giant Rosneft when he was blacklisted by the U.S. Now, Microsoft has beaten market expectations with a jump in revenue in the three months to June, and that saw its shares rise by 1.5% in after-hours trade. But it wasn't all good news. Microsoft is laying off thousands of workers from its global sales team in a bid to boost its cloud division. Samira Hussein has more on the changes at Microsoft. Samira Hussein there in New York. Now, Superman, Star Wars, Harry Potter, well, these are just some of the uh, multi-billion dollar superhero science fiction and fantasy franchises loved the world over. And for fans and franchises, nothing is bigger on the calendar than Comic-Con. Now, in its 47th year, the event uh, contributes a whopping $150 million each year to the host city, San Diego. Now, Rob uh, Southwitz is the author of Comic-Con and the Business of Pop Culture. He is speaking on six panels today at uh, Comic-Con. He told me the event just keeps getting bigger. There's already about 150,000 people in the convention center. Uh, there will probably be another 100,000 people here over the weekend uh, filling the streets and going to all of the events that are outside the convention center. Uh, as you say, the, the convention itself brings in about 150 million to uh, the city of San Diego. But San Diego Comic-Con has also spawned an entire industry of these fan conventions across North America and worldwide. Mm -hmm. And those, I calculate, have an economic impact of about three to four billion dollars. Gosh, that's a big number indeed. Now, going to the cinema in the last few years, you see Hollywood's huge obsession with uh, superheroes and, and Marvel comic heroes uh, as well. So what are some of the big uh, brand names and, and corporate firms who are out there this year? Well, of course, you've got Warner Brothers, which is the parent company of DC. Uh, they're coming off the summer's big hit uh, here in the States anyway, is uh, Wonder Woman. You've got Marvel Studios with their whole slate of films. Uh, their most recent film co-released with Sony was uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, of course, you've got uh, perennial TV brands uh, from Netflix. They've got Stranger Things, which is generating a lot of excitement. You've got uh, HBO with Game of Thrones, was mm -hmm. filling Hall H today. Uh, AMC has Walking Dead. It's just one after another. There's uh, so many of these properties now, and they're all generating enormous uh, fan enthusiasm. That's right, and the fans are so enthusiastic. They camp out, don't they, to, to get to see some of their uh, big heroes and, and the celebrities who descend on Comic-Con. So tell us, uh, what's the big one everyone's going to camp out for this year? Well, uh, you know, everybody has their own favorites. My pick for the, for the hottest one this time is the Warner Brothers panel on... Saturday morning is going to feature not only what's coming up next in the DC universe with Justice League, which a lot of fans are looking forward to, but they also have Steven Spielberg will be here in person to give us the first look of his new film, Ready Player One. And we've got also the new Blade Runner film that's coming out. Uh, and Harrison mm -hmm. Ford uh, is going to be here as well. Uh, it's going to be a really, you know, hot ticket to get into that. Um, in my opinion, though, actually the sleeper of the, mm -hmm. of the event is on Sunday uh, with Doctor Who. There's a huge number of Doctor Who fans here in North America. And, and she's a woman for the first the doctor, time. The doctor, everybody, in, uh, enthusiasm right. is high that she may make an appearance.
Oh, Salkovitz there. Let's take a look at Sweden's Volvo. It's setting up a China-based uh, joint venture to share their technology on electric cars uh, uh, with uh, firms owned by its parent company, Geely. The collaboration is set to further the automaker's transformation into an all-electric brand, as well as Geely's global, global ambitions. And uh, that's it for this edition of Asia Business Report. I'm Sharon Jitlail in Singapore. Thanks for watching.